Alright, so I saw Sam Sanders on Twitter said earlier before this that he said something about four hours or so ago, five hours maybe, um, before his announcement. He said, um, if you want the. Are you having a live stream party? If so, you can, um, if so, you, um, talk to us, we'll interview you, and you might be on the show tomorrow morning. So it must be tomorrow morning. Thank you. Right. See, that's an investigative journalist right there. <laughs> Thumbs up. Really quickly. Sure. Just one more, uh... Yeah, one more business one. Appreciate it. Thank All you, right. sir. Um, Thanks. Hello. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Burke. Burke, what's your last name? Um, Slothauber. Spell both of those names. Right? All right, yeah. Everyone has trouble with these. Um. I feel like there's room for being for stating things that are obviously wrong with yeah, facts. Absolutely. Um, and agree. still and you can still be rational. Yeah, well that's what I was saying earlier. But you have to just be very clear. Yeah, we need yeah. to say stuff, but at the same time we can't be emotional, like say, right. oh, the media is biased against us. We have to give examples. What happened to the mood in the room once the address started and throughout the address online? Yeah, wow. And, and how many folks were there? So that, right? so that was like a party party. All right, um, he did not drop out tonight. Uh, uh, did that surprise you? Should he have dropped out tonight? Gotcha. Um, what, what kind of space is the campaign in now? So he hasn't dropped out, but he doesn't have the numbers there to actually be the nominee. What what should we call this period of time that Bernie Sanders and his campaign is in right now? What is the name for this thing? I think someone's <laughs> talking behind you. Yeah, you know, there was one word he did not say tonight, but one word that he and a lot of his supporters have not been saying in the last few weeks uh, is that he has lost the race for nomination. And I know that some folks that I talked to were touchy about using that word. Would you say that he has lost the race for the nomination? Or, gotcha. Um, what do you make of what happens for the party in this election as far as unifying? He says he'll work to defeat Donald Trump. Um, what do you think that entails and does that entail party supporters like you voting for Clinton? Gotcha. So, so, you, so when you mentioned that the convention had, hasn't happened yet, are you saying that uh, there's still some desire for it to be a contested convention in which party could possibly come back and take the nomination. If he told his supporters to support Hillary Clinton, would you? As a, a which person? Gotcha, gotcha. I want to get onto some other calls, but I know you said that there were some other folks that had some thoughts really quickly. Now, in this country, the Democratic presidential race appears to be over, though the man in second place has not quite said it's over. On Tuesday, Bernie Sanders lost the year's final primary to Hillary Clinton. On Wednesday, he and Clinton had a private meeting. Last night, Bernie Sanders gave a speech. NPR's Sam Sanders listened to what he did say. It was not a big stadium-filling Sanders rally. He's had a lot of those this campaign. Good evening, and thank you very much for joining me. It was just Bernie Sanders. Just him, live streaming with a bit of an echo in front of a blue background with Bernie 2016, his campaign logo, all over it. And below his image, these words. The political revolution continues. Election days come and go, but political and social revolutions that attempt to transform our society never end. Sanders thanked his supporters, and then he talked about just how much his campaign for president has accomplished. 
When we began this campaign a little over a year ago, we had no political organization, no money, and very little name recognition. He's right. Well, a lot has changed over a year. Also true. Sanders won millions of votes, maybe even surprising Sanders himself. But he also came in second in delegates and the popular vote. So this could have been the night Sanders dropped out. He did not. Instead, he hit on just about everything in his political agenda. It is about ending a campaign finance system, which is corrupt and allows billionaires to buy elections. It is about ending the grotesque level of wealth and income inequality. It is about creating an economy that works for all of us. And there was more. Medicare for all, his signature proposal, the plight of minorities in America, immigration reform, infrastructure, and more. But Sanders made no mention of continuing to fight for the nomination. Instead, he said his campaign is now focused on defeating Donald Trump. And Sanders talked about how to keep the revolution going, urging his supporters to transform the Democratic Party and run for office. We need new blood in the political process, and you are that new blood. But in all of this, all 23 minutes of his speech... Bernie Sanders did not endorse Hillary Clinton or say exactly what he'd do at the Democratic convention. Hello? Hey, can you hear me? It's I talked with lots of Sanders supporters via Skype after the speech. Sanders supporter Laurel Bosma actually had a party for the live stream. We were hooping and hollering to different things that Bernie was saying and agreeing and saying, mm-hmm, uh-huh. We had him on a projector on the wall, and it was just... It was beautiful. She loved the speech, and she said Bernie should not drop out. No. Personally, no. No. Not in my opinion. When I asked her how she'd vote, what she'd do in November, she wouldn't say. We're not there yet. I also talked with Jack Thomas Wheatley. And I was writing down, um, like, what he's saying, and, and I almost thought of it as, like, a long breakup. Wheatley had volunteered for the Sanders campaign for months, but now supports Clinton. He had a lot of thoughts on the election and the Democratic Party, everything. But here's the thing. Jack Thomas Wheatley is only 16. You know, I I just realized you can't vote. No. No, (laughs) I can't. But I I am the president of the debate team in our school. Whatever his age, Wheatley said Sanders can still change things through people like himself. It's not just going to be he got everyone for this election. It's he's going to get everyone for the next couple of elections. People are now listening to what they have to say. I've talked to more people now that are younger Um, about politics than I ever had before just because they've been interested in what he's been saying. And maybe that's what it's about now, that new blood Bernie Sanders mentioned in his speech. Like Jack Thomas Wheatley said, for the next election, and the next one, and the next. Sam Sanders, No Relation, NPR News. Awesome. Thank y'all so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. Were you able to actually see him while you were? No. Laurel, the Warriors are playing the Cavaliers. No, like I even care. All right, so, yeah, I need... How old are you? 15. He needs to know when the convention starts. That reporter didn't even ask how old he is. He needs to know when the convention starts. He didn't ask. He needs to know He said, how do you spell your name and how do you say it? If anyone comes across and he forms some copy of, um what NPR aired if they do air anything, that'd be good so I can compare them. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know when or if they're going to... Yeah. I would know. think tomorrow morning. Yeah, it yeah, would be I fairly would. recent because they want to comment on the fact that it was his... his but man alive, how would they do that? I yeah. just don't think they'll use us. Yeah, I don't, like you said, he's going to talk to I don't a lot think of people. They, I, he's searching I, for that person. It's like, yeah, see these jerks? I don't mm-hmm. think they will, but I the raw I hope com- do. yeah the raw it. the raw footage we have though would be good enough because yeah, I can just talk about how he acted. To us. It's true. Yeah, yeah. you make a very good point. Even if they don't use us, yeah. I can still bust them. Uh huh. Yeah. Right. say you see what they did not show. Yeah, yes. they're only creating okay. a single perspective, okay. which is a narrow, limited perspective and mm-hmm. response. Yeah.
Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Were you able to actually see him while you were? No. Let me conclude by once again thanking everyone who has helped in this campaign in one way or another. We have begun the long and arduous process of transforming America, a fight that will continue tomorrow, next week, next year, and into the future. My hope is that when future historians look back and describe how our country move forward into reversing the drift toward oligarchy and how we move forward in creating a government which represents all of the people and not just the few, that they will note that to a significant degree that effort began with the political revolution of 2016. Thank you all very much. Good night. Last night, Bernie Sanders gave a speech. NPR Sam Sanders. The political revolution continues. Election days come and go, but political and social revolutions that attempt to transform our society never end. Sanders thanked his supporters, and then he talked about just how much his campaign for president has accomplished. When we began this campaign a little over a year ago, we had no political organization, no money, and very little name recognition. He's right. Well, a lot has changed over a year. Also true, Sanders won millions of votes, maybe even surprising Sanders himself. And he hit on just about everything in his political agenda. It is about ending a campaign finance system, which is corrupt and allows billionaires to buy elections. It is about ending the grotesque level of wealth and income inequality. It is about creating an economy that works for all of us. And there was more. Medicare for all, his signature proposal, the plight of minorities in America, immigration reform, infrastructure, and Sanders talked about how to keep the revolution going, urging his supporters to transform the Democratic Party and run for office. We need new blood in the political process, and you are that new blood. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? It's I talked with lots of Sanders supporters via Skype after the speech. Sanders supporter Laurel Bosma actually had a party for the live stream. We were hooping and hollering to different things that Bernie was saying and agreeing and saying, mm-hmm, uh-huh. We had him on a projector on the wall, and it was just, it was beautiful. She loved the speech. I also talked with Jack Thomas Wheatley. Wheatley had volunteered for the Sanders campaign for months. He had a lot of thoughts on the election and the Democratic Party, everything. But here's the thing. Jack Thomas Wheatley is only 16. You know, I, I just realized you can't vote. No. No, I can't. <laughs> Whatever his age, Wheatley said Sanders can still change things through people like himself. It's not just going to be he got everyone for this election. It's he's going to get everyone for the next couple of elections. People are now listening to what they have to say. I've talked to more people now that are younger um, about politics than I ever had before just because they've been interested in what he's been saying. And maybe that's what it's about now that new blood Bernie Sanders mentioned in his speech, like Jack Thomas Wheatley said, for the next election, and the next one, and the next. Sam Sanders, no relation, NPR News. Awesome. Thank y'all so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. 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 I know somebody who works here, and she said, and I've, I brought this up to her, I said, is there pressure coming down from the top to support Hillary? And she's like, nope, there's no pressure. I'm like, are you sure? And she, you know, she's, she has integrity. She says it's not happening. Now, I don't know how that could be because, you know, you listen to Steve Inskeep when he was interviewing Bernie Sanders a month and a half ago, and he was a jerk during that interview. And I liked Steve Inskeep until that day. For many years, I've been listening to him, and I couldn't believe the way he was treating Bernie. Asking the same question over and over in a badgering fashion because he, he was just... 
Right. Senator, I put a call out on Twitter. I said, I'm talking to Bernie Sanders. You got anything you want to know? And the most consistent theme in the many responses we got uh, had to do with how long you're going to stay in this race. Even though you just won Indiana, people are looking at the delegate counts, recognizing that you've got long odds and wondering if you're going to stay in too long. <laughs> Let me ask a couple of specific questions. These are just people on Twitter. Here's one. Are you threatening your revolution by continuing and alienating some Democrats from voting for Hillary Clinton eventually? Another variation on this question from Twitter. Um, which is more important, a Sanders presidency or a Democratic presidency? Bernie Sanders does better against Donald Trump than does Hillary Clinton. So if we want to make sure that we do not have a Donald Trump uh, in the White House, I think at this point, uh, Bernie Sanders is the strongest candidate. Do you mean to say a Sanders presidency is more important than this person's suggestion that a Democratic presidency might be more important? Question along those lines, and this is my question now. You told Chuck Todd of NBC the other day that if Secretary Clinton does clinch the nomination, quote, the responsibility will be on Secretary Clinton to convince all people, not just your supporters, that she is the kind of president this country needs. Are you convinced, Senator? The reason I ask is because you did say earlier in the campaign she was not qualified. Can you convince yourself, or have you convinced well, yourself I, you that know, she right is qualified? Now, Does that mean to say that you would be out this fall if you don't win the nomination? You know, as I just said, Steve, uh, I will do everything in my power to make sure that he does not become president. Talk me through. So, Steve, so thank you so much. Uh, Senator? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you mind if I ask one more question? One last question. Sure, we got okay, time sure. for one more. Yeah, just talk me talk me through, because you said you have a, a tough path, but one that you can walk. Right. I'm just interested about a little bit of the mechanics here. Uh, you'd have to win a lot of delegates, a great majority of delegates along the way to get a majority of pledged delegates. Uh, there are some big states ahead, it's certainly true, but just the way delegates are awarded, even if you win California, even if you win West Virginia, you don't get all the delegates. They're not winner-take-all. Doesn't right. that make this extraordinarily difficult for you? Yes, to it's an uphill battle, but you know what? Steve... Senator Sanders, thanks very much. Thank you very much, Steve. Take care. Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders spoke yesterday in southern Indiana. So when we're all talking um, to NPR, it's going to be kind of, it might be kind of messy just with lots of people, so in order to, and we have to be really clear to them because they could twist it, so when they everyone's, will if they want yeah, to anyway, right? yeah, but we have to be careful, and so one thing is, so that people's messages don't get talked over, so we need to make sure that, uh, Everyone gets a chance to talk and that they can be clearly heard. And also, thing. the person like it may ask questions uh -huh. that are the kind of thing that makes you go, yeah, that did happen. You know, like the angry things. Like, you know, do you feel like the, the elections were tainted? Do you feel this and that? Mm -hmm. They may throw out those kind of questions. Don't go for it. Right. Just be like, look, we listen it's, to Bernie. He's got great. a great message for right. the future. You know, let's just be mature about it because it's not going to do any good, especially on NPR. Mm-hmm. We just have to be the bigger people at this point. You know, well, the thing Bernie would be to attack NPR directly and, and to attack David, the fact that David Koch is allowed to fund the news hour. Now, that's not going to get on the air. So I actually yeah. did send them an email and said, hey, when you were talking Good about you. an interview this, about what I thought about how things went, mm -hmm. how Bernie was ignored and dismissed. Um, and I said... Um, they never got to laughing at about it. The, the, you know, that probably a lot of the reporters and staff there um, are dismayed by that, too. But they can't do anything about it because of... The structure there. Yeah, where the money comes there's from. There's not a co-op there. It's a, 
right. employee yeah. employer. Those people are very, very privileged workers. Hmm. And they protect that privilege. The primaries are over, so I think mm -hmm. whatever we say, we shouldn't be too scared to say stuff, though, because even if they try and twist it against us at this point, it won't have an effect. It So whatever, this well, is a good opportunity. It will, it will, you know, he, it will. depending on what people think of Bernie, is going to weigh in on what his effect is on the convention in July. Yeah. And I mean, we're just a small part. We're, oh, who yeah. knows if anybody's going to hear us hear this at all? Yeah, that's but, <laughs> but it's, it's important that you know people understand that we are rational people that yeah, think things well, through. We're not just about free tuition and you know yeah. not really thinking about and rob the banks. We can also, I think, mention not necessarily that it's conspiracy against us or anything like that. Just this is the problem that in order to, because it gets good ratings, Mia has been giving um, excessive coverage to Donald Trump. And it's that ignored our campaign. Well, that's been documented. How many times? It's like 23 times. It's like The coverage of the other candidates. For Bernie and 20 to 4 for Hillary. It's just amazing. I mean, why anybody would, you know, why? Because, you know, it's going to sell advertising. That's the only reason I can come up with. It's interesting to watch, but, that's for sure. The yeah. biggest, the biggest that reason that the <laughs> media is doing this, I think, is because we are the only serious threat to their income, that co the part of their income that comes from all this political campaign spending. I liked what he said. Eight million people gave him donations. As opposed to a record. 20 people owning more wealth than the, the next 150 million Americans, that right. made a huge. That makes a huge difference, and people have to hear that. It's not something like you were talking about, Bob, where people have already made up their minds. No, that what you're talking about. That's definitely worth saying. As far as so, Burke, <laughs> I, I agree with everything you're saying in terms of. Um, I do feel like the media was biased and all that stuff. <laughs> However, we say that, and everybody who believes it is going to agree with us, and everybody who, this stuff's right. been out there. People have already picked their positions on that, and you can say it, and it's not going to change anybody's opinion. You've got the no. people that agree with you, and the people that disagree. The so it's sort of a moot point, it except they could be used against us. Sorry, Ben. Well, they're not going to say it on NPR either. Right. We want to talk about these things, but it's not today's topic of the report, I don't think. I think we should forget the idea that we're going to be on the air. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm we are, are. but it really but, doesn't matter. But I didn't come here to be on air. I'm going to try and mention that Bernie's the more electable one, but I need to connect it. I'm going to try and connect that to just Trump has been covered excessively and the Sanders campaign has been ignored. Even with all this biased play, all this all this uh -huh. propaganda, yeah, we still almost won. Right. Yeah, and that's but that's and had we had the the independent votes and a straight fair process. We would have won. Right. Yeah, and this is what, well, what I'm saying is I think... And we could win in November yeah. if you folks nominate Bernie instead of Hillary. We, we have to be clear about what our message is. Like, if, if I'm in school and, and, and I'm given a report on the dinosaurs, I can throw in a bunch of facts about the dinosaurs. But my point of my story is going to be very focused. You know, maybe I want to talk about how they became extinct or... The relevance in the in the in the history of all animals, whatever. Yeah, we still have dinosaur DNA. In but us. You made a very good point where the the, re, the primary the, they're over. So the effect of referencing, um, you know, this was rigged and everything else is going to be very minimal, mm -hmm. other than to vent and to complain. Although the, they could get people to sign in on well, petitions the, and stuff. Right? I mean, the message that's going to come across is we yeah. get it. You Bernie Bros, you're angry, right? But, so that that's not the focus. This right. shouldn't be the focus. Why did Bernie, who's a very intelligent man, he's been arguing these points for a gazillion years, and the man himself isn't talking about these things. Why? Because he's framed his conversation in the future, what we need to do to change the future. Right. And so if we communicate that to NPR, which I don't actually think is going to, they're going to come and bail out. Right. Yeah, you know, they, you know, but... If we if we're communicating the past, mm -hmm. that's what they really want. Yeah. If we're communicating Bernie's future, and we go, you know, it's not it's not about Bernie this election, twenty sixteen. It's about the revolution. It's about the, the revolution. Ideas the ideas. That's going to make their minds explode. For me, it's the beginning. Um, Bernie has awakened us to transform the Democratic Party. He's brought 
lots and lots of new voters into the Democratic Party. Um, not only young people, not only millennials, but all kinds of people from all ages and backgrounds are really excited about him. I've seen this throughout all of our volunteer events and rallies, brought in independent voters. It's just been really exciting. He wants to end perpetual warfare and make ourselves a nation of economic, social, racial, and environmental justice, which I just thought that was a beautiful way to put it. All I know is it's the beginning for Bernie Sanders and for our movement. Whoever the nominee will be, we are behind Bernie Sanders 100%. Bringing in people who will carry on his message in all levels of government, getting those people elected, getting um, young people co to go into um, careers that will help promote social welfare. I'm not going to predict the future. What I'm thinking about right now is just going along with um, where we're at in the moment. I want to be mindful about where we're at in the moment. Right now the convention hasn't happened. We've been against Donald Trump since day one and we will continue to be. I'm not one who's going to try and predict the future. All I know is I'm going to support Bernie and whatever he's doing. Each individual has to decide that for themselves, but like I've already said, um, we're not there yet. What were your thoughts on the address? Um, I think he did a really good job. Um, I think, you know, things have been tough, but he's remained hopeful and he's, he mentioned a lot of good causes like the Native Americans, which I don't think I've ever seen a politician mention, and so I think he did a really good job. Sweetie, um, this is great. I just have one more question for the party host. Can you put it back on really quickly? Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, I just want to get an idea of the scene. So you had it projected on a big wall. What kind of food did you have? Oh, potluck, of course. <laughs> what kind of things were potlucked? Um, so. We had, we had some vegan food. We had some donuts. Fair. Vegetables. Sounds fun. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then tell me where the party will. You're in Virginia? Uh -huh. Yes. Where in Virginia? In Reston, Virginia. Reston, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh, well, my name is Philip Dale. Um, I have been organizing a lot of barnstorms for Bernie. Uh, I've been volunteering as a regional leader uh, for the last couple of months. Um, actually, since the beginning of 2016 uh, with the Bernie campaign. Uh, and uh, one thing that um, I, it struck me is how he was able to bring people of many different uh, racial, economic, and uh, political backgrounds. And uh, in, in terms of political backgrounds, I, I can definitely say that there were a lot of volunteers who were, you know, there were obviously a lot of Democrats, but also some uh, you know, uh, left-wing independents, uh, independents generally, uh, independents were just coming out hugely for him, and even moderate Republicans, Greens, and Libertarians. Um, and, you know, these are all people who would not ordinarily work go for the same candidate, but they did this time around, and um, honestly, I, I don't think anyone else could bring people together the way he did, um, in this, in the, at least in this election cycle, um, without you know addressing the same issues that he's doing. And also by, by demonstrating that integrity, uh, I think that they, they only would follow someone of integrity. Uh, and of course, when push comes to shove in November, um, if he's not the nominee, I'm sure there are people will I'm pretty sure that people will follow their conscience and they'll, they'll vote however they want to vote and that may not be for the same person. And, um, you know, that I think that um, they should keep that in mind, I think, when, when they're selecting who the Democratic nominee is. But ultimately, whatever happens, I know I will be continuing to work for um, this, these issues that um, he has brought up. And they should be bigger than, I think, than even just any particular party. I think that all these people, no matter who they were and what party they affiliated with, uh, will continue to work for the same ideas because they we they all agree with Awesome. Thank y'all so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. 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 Were you able to actually see him while you were? No.
So how do we I keep our know. message going? I don't know. That's why I want to figure that out. Maybe, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can <laughs> meet, it can be, but maybe there also has to be acknowledgement that each of us will do it our own way. If we air our ideas and talk about, talk them out, as C points out, right. be a devil's advocate, criticize the ideas so that we know what their, their fallacies and weaknesses are, we'll come up with better ideas. And we'll be willing to try things because we'll be willing to make mistakes. Yeah, that's The biggest right. problem the Democratic Every Party right now right. has is they're not willing to make mistakes or admit that they ever did. That's true, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. Right. That's true. Right. Right. Yeah. And maybe we should, we should, um, I mean, maybe not. I don't know. I'm I'm I'm, I'm waffling on this. I'm thinking to myself. <laughs> get the idea I, I'm, I'm thinking, here. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that. <laughs> Hi, Hillary. Push, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm thinking we 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 push the idea that he is the better candidate in 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 to to against Donald Trump. That he had much more yeah, support. That yeah. many more yeah. people gave to his campaign. Yeah. Yep. That he has enthusiasm. He has all that. And, and, and all the independents and polls, polls make yes. him the winner. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, and the independents love him, and the young people. Both of yeah, those groups okay. are going to be hugely important in November, and a lot of them couldn't vote. A lot of them couldn't vote in the closed primaries and whatnot, or, or be, I mean, you, we could also say because of the the, the no, 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 just bacteria put, and whatever. Just but enough yeah. to say they they didn't couldn't, get couldn't their get chance, chance to, to vote. vote. Their chance to vote. They didn't, they, get, their they didn't get their right to vote. Right. He's they didn't even get stronger, their right and that's yeah. good enough. They didn't get the right. They didn't right. right. You don't right. have to right. go any further brilliant. than that. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. 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 Some of us are going to vote for Hillary. Some of us are going to not vote at all. Some of us are going to vote for the Green Party, uh, maybe a couple for right constitutional, Bernie but I, or right in Bernie Sanders. So it, it's like we're going to be diluted in the act. No, it doesn't really matter so much as long as we're united in terms of what we think the issues are and we do, we're we willing to do something about it. See, yeah, so what's C going to say? Or what, what were you going to say, C? Uh, it's going to be the devil's advocate. Uh, yeah, the devil's advocate. Well, you made me want to think of, think of a couple of things. First of all, you're a genius. Second Thanks. of all... Um, Bernie said something about um, uh, the message. He said something about, you know, we need to push forward the people's voice. Yes. And and that was that was it. I mean, it's not about Bernie. It's not about Hillary. It's not about anything. It's whether or not the message is 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 reflective of my voice. Right. That's why, you know, it's not anti-Hillary. It's not even pro-Bernie. Bernie. It's going, you know what? That's my voice. Right. And when we nominate or elect somebody who doesn't match my voice, of course, I'm, I'm not going to respond to that. I'm, it's not going to resonate with me. So he's focusing on all those issues, but it's about, are we actually pushing forward the people's voice or someone else's? And right. if we're not, you know, game over. Yeah, this campaign has made me hopeful, though, because I didn't imagine, I thought the divide in this country was too big. Oh, I thought I was going to have to go to Canada. I'm going to be 68 yeah, in July. But, but I, didn't, I didn't see, <laughs> the fact that I, I saw really these do. people working together, and it, I was just, part it, of Iceland. it blew my mind, and, you know, maybe maybe I saw more than most, I don't know, but it, it just, it really, it blew, it, it blew my mind, because I couldn't imagine that these people would work together on anything. You that, know, that's it, what... I, that 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 just that, that 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 and the fact that they cared about each other that they were just like you know and that we could have like a discussion of the issues where ah yeah I disagree I disagree all right let's go back to working to Bernie like it's like they, they actually they, they they were or like oh yeah you're right yeah you're right I don't well, know but you know, it's like it's somebody like, left despair no but but we, we they were willing to work but they're willing to work for a high and also they agreed on a lot like yeah of course they, they're different philosophy the socialist is not going to agree with the modern Republican the progressive is not going to agree with the libertarian. I mean, they did, although they did agree on some things, which is just goes to show the, not a lot of these philosophies are not mutually exclusive. They tend to focus on particular things. But the the, the matter that but well, that that also was a mind block. So I thought, by definition, if you're a conservative, you can't agree with a progressive. It just that in this campaign, I now believe that that's not true. One of the things that I got out of Bernie's speech is uh, yes, this election may go down like it looks like it's going to go down yeah. between Hillary and Trump, Trump. and Hillary is probably going to win. But I think that what Bernie, kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, I think what Bernie's going to do is carry the revolution forward. Yeah, I myself am going to continue supporting Bernie. I think in the Senate he's when he's going to go back to the Senate. I think he's going to continue the revolution and run it, you know, from his Senate office. I actually think he should. I think I think I'm going to be still part of his revolution and respond to when he wants us to do this or that. Yeah. 
put pressure on so and so, you know, mail in emails, well, uh, mail or whatever. That's how I think we can continue this right. resolution, Jeff a revolution. Jeff, Jeff, Check out Brand Jeff, New Jeff, Congress and of course Jeff, Bernie's new site. I like Brand slash New win. Congress just because of the name. Because I've been following <laughs> that. It's it's exactly what he's talking about. Although there's one website too that I really like, um, or the group organization. Uh, it's called Represent dot us or dot us. I guess it's a pun, okay, but it's a it's a nonpartisan organization, and the one thing I like is that they brought together a lot of people, including some people that I, don't, I strongly disagree with, like Tea Party types and whatnot. But they, they've reached across the political spectrum against everyone who's against corruption in government. And they've brought them together, together and they've created like laws that they're introducing in new states and so forth. They're saying, all right, a lot of this corruption is legalized. But yeah, we can change with this with, with a change of this stuff, and it'll be hard to do in the national level. They've already shown they they blocked the national, but at the state level, we have more control. And we're, what they're doing is introducing forms of this anti-corruption legislation all over the all over the country, and they're doing it in a bipartisan or multi-partisan way. <laughs> I took it to the Washington Post, <laughs> so I'm one of those unknown people that supplied them with a lot of information. I found I found letters from corp from um, people like Cannon telling their employees in a, in a letter, I mean, it's written in a letter, you will contribute X amount of money to the Republican National Committee and, you know, and, and the checks were right there yeah. in the envelope from Creep to the Republican National Committee. So I copied all this stuff and I gave it to the social, the social etiquette editor of the Washington Post because a friend of mine actually knew her. <laughs> her name was Nina Hyde. <laughs> anyway, it got to Woodward and Bernstein. And they used some of it, so but I was very it, glad I did it. I guess I, what I'm yeah, saying is, oh, no, no, I hear you, you never know I want to what idea, you yeah. will find. And you never know no. exactly where, where something will change. generation of people actively involved in public service who are prepared to provide the quality of life the American people deserve. I have met more kinds of people in this election than I could have ever and to see them all working for this common cause and I don't hear this a lot because a lot of people were like you know, hardcore Democrats maybe from the start, and, and so they're, they're, you know, or they were like, you know, and so, I mean, but but I've met so many different people, um, you know, some of them normally vote Libertarian, some of them normally vote Green, some of them normally vote Republican, and yet they all came together around, and of course a lot of them are Socialists or Progressives or something, and yet they all came together around Bernie, and they were willing to set aside you know, some of their differences because they were people who really cared about human beings and having a just society. Okay. Uh, what were your thoughts on the address? I actually was really inspired um, because prior to this, this address, I, you know, I was always thinking in terms of the, the current year, the current election, um, you know, the, the contest, uh, the convention, and I realized during this address, none of that entered my mind whatsoever. I was simply thinking about, you know, my voice, the issues, and how to take my voice and those issues to the future. And Bernie Sanders really focused on what we needed to do now to prepare for the future. Outside of any the context of any election or any contest or any convention. And so I was really inspired about how I could take his message which reflected my voice and, and use that to prepare for the future. Gotcha. Um, how do you see yourself voting this November? You know what, my, I feel like my, my voting preference has evolved because in the beginning, I didn't really care about voting for anybody. Um, Bernie Sanders came out of nowhere and I started to think, you know what, there's somebody actually reflecting my views. Uh, so I, I was never pro-Bernie because I didn't know he existed and I certainly wasn't anti-Hillary. Um, 
it was very similar to me as uh, Obama, where he just kind of came out of nowhere and he gave me an idea of somebody who I might want to vote for. So when I when the Bernie Sanders came along, I was inspired to, you know what, follow him because he seemed to be reflecting finally my voice. Now as the convention comes up and of course the general election comes up, I'm now you know, presented with a different possibility, a different option of who am I going to vote for. And I haven't made that determination yet. I'm, I'm not in any kind of fixed position. I'm not Bernie or die. Um, I'm really looking at who's going to best represent my voice, who's going to put the Supreme you know, justices on, on, on the U.S. Supreme Court. I'm looking at the actual issues, and I haven't really made that final decision yet, and nor am I fixed or you know, firmly you know, destined to any fixed position. I will know after I, I get through the convention, I hear all the platforms, I see, you know, whether Bernie's platforms reflect my voice have been implemented, and then I'll make that determination. Gotcha, gotcha. I gotta run some other calls. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'll yeah. just yeah. I'll that's, why just, a, that's probably why he's a jerk. Yeah, yeah I'll just read about <laughs> how he acted. Also, the high school will, years were pretty tough for him. <laughs> also, will point out just how he um didn't how he seemed to want negativity. Yeah, because and um, but I think about, like, we were pretty good at reflecting yeah. that. I think we did good, but I think I just want to show that this is how the media is acting. It's like, honestly, at, it's like you're at war. Yeah. Right? Honestly, no one's probably going to read the article, but I feel like I just I'm frustrated and if we don't say anything then no one will hear. So I think I this is yeah. what I can do to help. So I should And that's to, the right attitude. Yeah. Like I said, you don't you don't write for people to read, you write because you want to express yeah. the truth. And yeah. so what and people will find it yeah. or not. I yeah. mean how many times have look at Bernie. Uh-huh. Bernie has been writing for, for, for a gazillion, literally a gazillion years. Uh-huh. And then we found him much later. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. If, imagine if he ever gave up. We would have never had right. the unique type of candidate that Bernie is. I mean, we are <laughs> Bernie. We are Bernie. Right. But Bernie had his own fire. He, he was there marching with Martin Luther King. Right. And right. he makes us realize, you know what? We can be Bernie. Right. Bernie was us a gazillion years ago, and because of his efforts and the people that came before him, it won't take as many years right. to create Bernie 2.0. Right. Mm-hmm. Bernie is the beginning. Oh yeah. yeah. It, just like what he said tonight, you're going to look back in time and say, "This is where it started." Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. about Bernie Sanders. We are so excited about Bernie Sanders movement. We have so much to say. Okay, what happened to the mood in the room once the address started and throughout the address online? The only, the thing that bothers me though is that, that it's okay. one thing to run, but as he pointed out, unless we can get, um, address the corruption that's occurred even in this election, right? Uh, what chance do people that with his ideas have in winning? The media determined that we were a fringe campaign. Nobody thought we were going anywhere. Well, a lot has changed over a year. During this campaign, we won more than 12 million votes. We won 22 state primaries and caucuses. We came very close within two points or less in five more states. In other words, Our vision for the future of this country is not some kind of fringe idea. None of them are people that I trust or would want to uh, or vote for. And I don't. I mean, you know, I'd rather vote for myself than one of them. It's his suggestion to start running yourself, but... um, I've got the screen back. Well, we need to have some kind of... uh, um, In the wake of this, we can't... The the, the political revolution can't just dissolve completely. We need to create some kind of... And we don't talk about Democratic or Republican ideology. We stay on the issues. And we stay with people who we know are honest, intelligent, and hardworking. 
brandnewcongress.org or brandnewcongress.com. And it's about, it's exactly what he's talking about, uh, putting progressive people in Congress, like all at once. So if you can email that video to us, oh. that'd be good. Uh, it'll be the gigantic video, but that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah, no, 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 I'm gonna you know clean it up, edit it, make it nice, and then yeah, yeah, I'm wait, a little bit longer. Edit it out of context. To yeah, any from yeah. Hillary. Right. Any any, any yeah. parts that make me look you know tiny and not strong and not tall, I'm gonna edit those parts out. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. All right.